Now, around 1.3 million children in England will be able to claim vouchers for free school meals during the summer holidays following a campaign led by the Manchester United footballer Marcus Rashford. Ministers had previously said that they would not agree to free school meal vouchers outside term time. Uh, the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, praised Mr Rashford's contribution to the debate around poverty. Uh, Scotland and Wales will also continue with the voucher programme, while Northern Ireland is considering an extension. Our chief political correspondent, Vicky Young, has more details. Here's Rashford, his latest opportunity. He's used to taking on opponents and winning. But this campaign has been unlike any other for Marcus Rashford. Mr. Rashford has had to work for that. He's spoken about his own experience relying on free school meals and he's raised millions of pounds to provide food for families in need. They have so much food, yeah. if that makes sense. In Leicestershire, Dev and his brother say they want to concentrate on exams, not worry about their next meal. Without free school meals, I would not even have access to the same healthy, nutritious food that I have. I'd be eating such cheap, unhealthy food, the type of food that only keeps you full for an hour. It'd leave me feeling more hungry and wanting more unhealthy food. And it's really a safety net for families like mine. After initially refusing, the government now says eligible children in England will get a food voucher worth £15 a week over the summer holidays. You've talked a lot about levelling up and tackling inequalities in Britain, uh, but it's taken a campaign by a 22-year-old footballer to force you into action on free school meals. Have you lost touch? with those that you promised to help. I talked to Marcus uh, Rashford today and to congratulated on him on his campaign, in which, to, to, to be honest, I only became aware of uh, very, very recently today. And I, I thank him for what he's done. I do think it's right that we should be looking after families of the, uh, of the vulnerable, most vulnerable, the neediest right now. And that's why uh, we've got the, uh, the, the COVID summer food uh, plan, uh, which we've announced today. And I, and I hope it will make uh, a, a big difference uh, to those kids and, and to those families. Prime Minister, will children go hungry this summer? Faced with questions like that, politicians need to come up with answers. And a Twitter spat with a young, popular international footballer was unlikely to help. When Marcus Rashford urged people this morning to think about families who couldn't have a hot shower, one cabinet minister sounded unsympathetic, replying that water can't be disconnected. But the tone soon changed and so did the policy, a move welcomed by Labour. It was obvious that there was a need for these free school meals. Uh, they should never have put that in jeopardy. We had to push them all the way. Um, and Marcus Rashford played a really important part in that. But I welcome the fact there's a U-turn. That's the right thing to do. Uh, and so now 1.3 million children who need free school meals will get them. Conservative MPs wonder why the government resisted this move for so long. They fear that this and other recent U-turns make it look like the Prime Minister is being reluctantly pushed into things rather than taking a decisive lead. Of course, in an unprecedented health and economic crisis, the pressure on ministers is enormous. But at times, they seem to be making it harder for themselves. Marcus Rashford says he's given a voice to vulnerable families, but there's more he wants to do. Vicky Young, BBC News, Westminster. Well, Marcus Rashford has told the BBC tonight that he'd been taken aback by the government's change of policy and that he was proud of his part in changing young lives for the better. He was speaking to my colleague Sally Nugent. When you heard the news, how surprised were you? Yeah, I was obviously obviously shocked. Um, it's, it's a big decision for, for someone to make. Um, you know, I'm just grateful that, that he... That, that the Prime Minister did uh, change his decision and, you know, he understood and, um, you know, I spoke to him earlier on today and just thanked him for that and, um, yeah, it was, you know, it was a nice conversation to have with him and just that we understood each other. So you've spoken to the Prime Minister. Um, it was a nice conversation, as you said. You know, how, how did that chat go? Um, how, what does it... Do you, does he phone up and say, hi, Marcus, it's Boris? <laughs> yeah, um, no, he was just obviously saying thank you for... Um, you know, using using what I've what I've sort of built in in a positive manner, and um, you know, it was sort of was just thanking each other really because he didn't have to do what he done, and neither did neither did I. So um, you know, he was just grateful that someone had um, basically just had an opinion and, and shared it with with people, and you know, just been that voice for people that didn't really um, have the have the platform to to speak out as much as they would like to. Are you aware that 
the way Boris Johnson was informed about your campaign was he was actually played the interview that we did the other night. Yeah, um, yeah, he mentioned that on the phone and he just said that's what that's what sort of moved him really because he, he probably understood it a little bit more, like hearing it from someone rather than um, just reading it or, or hearing about it. So, um, yeah, I think that was obviously a key, key factor in him changing his decision.